Elizabeth Short was born July 29, 1924, in the Hyde Park section of Boston, Massachusetts. She was the third of five daughters for her mother Phoebe and her father Cleo Short. Here on Google Earth, Boston, Massachusetts is over here, and the Hyde Park section of it is right in here. In 1927, her family moved to Portland, Maine, right up here. And then shortly thereafter, the family moved back to Boston, but this time they moved to the Medford section of Boston, Massachusetts, which is in this general area here. Her father built miniature golf courses for a living, but when the stock market crashed in 1929, he couldn't find any more work and he lost all of his money. In 1930, her father's car was discovered at the Charlestown Bridge, which is located right here. He was nowhere to be found, and their best guess was that he jumped off the bridge, committed suicide, and was swept away by the river. From that point, her mother moved the entire family into a small apartment in Medford, right here and worked as a bookkeeper to provide for her children. Elizabeth had bronchitis and asthma attacks as a child, and at the age of 15, she underwent lung surgery. After the surgery, the doctors suggested she move to a mild climate during the winter months. So her mother then sent her to spend winters in Miami, Florida with family friends for the next three years. So Elizabeth would spend summers in Boston, and for the winter months, she'd go down to Miami, Florida. In 1942, when Elizabeth was 18, her mother received a letter of apology from her husband, who they thought was dead. The letter confirmed he was still alive and that he started a new life in Vallejo, California. In December of 1942, Elizabeth moved all the way to Vallejo, California. which is up here, to live with her father. She had not seen him for 12 years. However, arguments between her and her father led her to move out in January of 1943. She was with him for less than two months when she took a job at Vandenberg Air Force Base Exchange near Lompoc, California. So she moved from Vallejo down into this area here. Here's Lompoc, and here is Vandenberg Air Force Base, formerly named Camp Cook. She left Lompoc in the middle of 1943 and moved to Santa Barbara. While she was living in Santa Barbara, she was arrested at the age of 19 for underage drinking. And this was her mugshot taken by the Santa Barbara Police Department when she was 19 years old. As a result of this arrest, the police sent her back to Medford, Massachusetts, but she went to Florida instead. While she was in Florida, she met this guy, Major Matthew Michael Gordon Jr. He was a decorated Army Air Force officer. While he was recovering from a plane crash that occurred in India, Elizabeth said he proposed to her in a written letter. She accepted his marriage proposal. However, on August 10th, 1945, one week before the end of World War II, Gordon died in a second plane crash. Eleven months later, Elizabeth relocated to Los Angeles in July of 1946 to visit Army Air Force Lieutenant Joseph Fickling, who she knew from Florida. He was stationed at the Naval Reserve Air Base in Long Beach, California. So she came all the way back here to Los Angeles. And shortly before her death, she took a job as a waitress and rented a room behind the Florentine Gardens nightclub on Hollywood Boulevard, which is this building right here. Now it says she rented a room behind the building. I don't know if back then there was a structure back here or structures or if there was an actual room attached to the building itself. If we go down to street view. You can see 
It still has its original name from the 1940s, Florentine Gardens. Going to exit street view. Go a little wider here. So you can see Florentine Gardens here. And she was last seen alive on January 9th, 1947, after being dropped off at the Baltimore Hotel in Los Angeles. She was dropped off by a guy named Robert Manley. He was a 25-year-old married salesman she had been dating. Here's the Baltimore Hotel. It's right here. Go down to Street View. See, it says Baltimore Hotel right here. This was the last place that she was seen alive. She was seen using the lobby telephone by Baltimore staff members. Exit Street View. Shortly thereafter, she was allegedly seen at the Crown Grill Cocktail Lounge about a half a mile away, which is right here. If we go down to street view, it's gone through quite a bit of change since then, but it was one of these that she was allegedly seen at shortly after being seen at the Baltimore Hotel. Exit street view. On the morning of January 15, 1947, a lady by the name of Betty Bursinger was on a walk with her, her young daughter. While they were walking, Betty saw what appeared to be a discarded store mannequin. When she realized it was a real person, she rushed to a nearby house and called the police. That location... was actually this neighborhood. Back then it was not a neighborhood. The only thing here at the time were sidewalks, driveways, empty lots, and just a couple of houses down at this end of the street. If we get in closer, you can see here Elizabeth Short's body was found right in here. It appeared that her hands would have been up here on this driveway of this neighbor's house. And the rest of her body would have been what is now the lawn of the house right here. She was found right in here. Here is an old photo taken shortly after her body was discovered. You can see she's lying right here. There's a driveway here and a driveway here. And the main marker for this location, the one thing that is still there and has not been moved, is this fire hydrant that you can see right here. And back here at Google Earth, you can see that fire hydrant sitting right here. So the photo I just showed you was taken from approximately here, pointing in that direction. The vehicles were all parked along here, and her body was resting approximately right here. Now real quickly, here's a photo of her. She was cut in half. You can see her right hand up here. Uh, you can see the driveway through here. So her hands would have been in what is today the neighbor's part of the neighbor's driveway. You can line it up with the driveway across the street here, and you can see the rest of her is what is today the house's front lawn. She was posed for maximum shock effect, which is a telltale sign of a sociopathic killer. Also, the nature of her wounds highly suggested she was murdered by someone with medical or surgical knowledge or experience. If we go to street view... can see this is what it looks like today. She would have been approximately right in here. If we look a little further, you can see the fire hydrant sitting right there. And today, on the empty lots, you have this house and this house. I'm going to exit street view. Pull back, and I'm going to go to a new location. Way up here. 
And this is what I call the George Hodel house. Right here. This house was known as the Soden House, and it was built in the 1920s. In 1945, George Hodel bought the house, and it was said that he had drug parties and orgies in his, what he called the gold room. In 1949, Hodel's teenage daughter ran away. She said she was raped by her father and some other men. Police raided the home and found pornography and what they quoted as questionable objects. George Hodel was eventually arrested, and when he was questioned by the police, he said that he was, quote, delving into the mystery of love and the universe. And he also said that what he was being accused of was, quote, unclear like a dream. I can't figure out whether someone is hypnotizing me or I am hypnotizing someone. That is a very creepy answer. And I believe wholeheartedly he and other men raped his own daughter. In addition to that, George Hodel was a medical doctor and he had the medical or surgical knowledge or experience making him very capable of being able to create the cuts and the wounds that were found on Elizabeth Short's body. George Hodel died in 1999. While going through his things, his son Steve found this photo that he strongly believed to be a photo of Elizabeth Short. He had it forensically analyzed using the most modern technology of the time, and the information he received from the technology said that they could not confirm it was Elizabeth Short, but that the woman in this photo and a photo of Elizabeth Short were both very, very similar. Now if we view these two photos side by side, the right lower lip of Elizabeth Short's mouth right here in her mugshot does look similar to the right lower lip of the woman in this picture. The nose could be the same if you look closely, but the space between the eyelids and the eyebrows is very close here. It's hard to tell in this photo because her eyes are closed. One thing I noticed, this woman appears to have a mole right here. And I don't see a mole on Elizabeth Short's photo here. The hairline up here could be similar to this one here. The earlobe here in this photo, can't really see it compared to this earlobe. But I could understand why the program said they look very, very similar, but could not confirm that they were the same person. After finding the photo in George Hodel's favorite photo album, his son Steve Hodel was so convinced that his dad George Hodel murdered Elizabeth Short that he wrote a book titled Black Dahlia Avenger. After the book was published, a journalist did some research about it, and he found out that after George Hodel's daughter, which would be Steve Hodel's sister, claimed that she was raped, the district attorney of Los Angeles bugged George Hodel's house. And in a recorded phone conversation with a friend, George Hodel said, quote, Supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia, they couldn't prove it now. They can't talk to my secretary anymore because she's dead, end quote. And this was a secretary that nobody could substantiate ever existed. There's one other thing I find interesting. If you look here at the Hodel house, the one that George Hodel lived in, not too far away, right here, you have John Marshall High School. And this photo right here of Elizabeth Short was taken out in front of John Marshall High School. And the one reason I find this photo interesting is that Elizabeth Short spent at least some of her time in a very close proximity to George Hodel's home. And from John Marshall High School to George Hodel's home right here is about a mile, a mile and a half, or about 1.6 to 2 kilometers. So there you have it, a brief overview of the Elizabeth Short incident that occurred in January of 1947 in Los Angeles, California, right here from Google Earth.